the purpose of my visit was to come down here and make sure that the State Department and the Department of Defense were deeply coordinated across uh, the, a whole broad range of issues. We certainly discussed uh, the ongoing tension uh, in the Gulf, but we talked about um, a much broader range of issues. Uh, if, if we're to deliver at the State Department on the President's diplomatic objectives, uh, we have to be uh, tightly woven with our military. And I appreciate uh, General McKinsey, General Clark, and their teams spending time with me and my team today uh, to make sure we were doing just that. Uh, we had extensive conversations about uh, tactical, operational, strategic levels of, of work between our two organizations uh, to make sure that when we present options, uh, alternatives, uh, policy recommendations to President Trump, we're doing so in a way that is uh, coherent and consistent and uh, leads the President to a fuller understanding of the uh, challenges and opportunities connected to uh, decisions that he makes. Uh, we, we certainly, as I said, spoke about uh, the challenges that are in Iran. We talked about the uh, CENTCOM uh, decision uh, that Secretary Shanahan and the President approved to move a, a thousand more uh, Americans into theater to make sure that we're in a position to do the right thing, which is to continue to work to convince the Islamic of Iran, uh, of Iran that we are serious and to deter them from further aggression in the region. Uh, it's been our mission since the uh, beginning of this administration uh, to convince the Iranian regime not to move forward with their nuclear program and not to continue to engage in development of their missiles and all the other activities, the malign activities that they've been engaged in around the world. Uh, that's why we put in place uh, the pressure campaign that's now been ongoing for uh, a year and a couple months. Uh, it's been very effective, and now we need to make sure that we continue to do that so that we ultimately get the opportunity to convince Iran that it's not in their best interest to behave in this way. Uh, we all have to remember this isn't just uh, two and a half years or five years. This is 40 years of Iranian activity that has led us to this point. And to reestablish deterrence uh, is a challenge, but one that I know the Trump administration is up to. And we're working hard each and every day, both in the State Department and the Department of Defense and all of the elements of the United States government to achieve that. And with that, I'm happy to take a couple questions. Go ahead. Are there any yes, ma'am. directly or through uh, third with Iran to try and deconflict the situation in the Persian Gulf? Uh, uh, almost certainly. Uh, President Trump had sent President Abe to uh, take a message of his to the leadership in Iran. You have to remember, these are messages for the leadership. Uh, I think the Iranian people are being woefully misserved by that leadership. But yes, we're engaged in, uh, we, we have been engaged in many messages, even this, this moment right here, communicating to uh, Iran uh, that we are there to deter aggression. Uh, President Trump does not want war, and uh, we will continue to communicate that message while uh, doing the things that are necessary to protect American interests uh, in the region. Japan and Germany have asked for additional proof of the attack on the tankers, and you said Sunday that you were going to provide that. Have, uh, when are we expected to see that? Yeah, we'll, get, we'll continue to provide additional information about uh, those attacks, but we shouldn't focus on just those two attacks. There, since uh, the beginning of May, there are now over a half dozen different instances of Iranian attacks in the region. Uh, some thwarted, some uh, not, not successfully thwarted, and next they had an impact. Uh, but I saw, just as I walked in here, uh, Chancellor Merkel say that she thought there was strong evidence that Iran had engaged in uh, this activity. Uh, we'll continue to work with partners all around the world. Uh, I, 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 it's worth reminding everyone here, uh, you have China that depends enormously on energy transiting the Strait of Hormuz. You have South Korea, Indonesia, Japan, all of whom have an enormous interest in ensuring there's freedom of navigation throughout this waterway. Uh, the United States is prepared to do its part, but every nation that has a deep interest in uh, protecting that shipping lane so that energy can move around the world and support their economies needs to make sure they understand the real threat, the real threat to their interests in the region and the real threat to their country's economies if we're not successful in doing that. It obviously falls within the operation, operating theater of U.S. Central Op Special Operations Command and Central Command. What do you say to the families of the men and women who work within those commands about how they should prepare themselves for what may come over the next year or two years? Look, the first thing I'd do is say thank you to them uh, for their service to the nation. Uh, I, I know many of these young men and women, they are talented, uh, capable, aggressive. They have put us in the place where we have this opportunity to deter Iran. And what, I would, what I'd say to them is what I say to everyone who is engaged in this kind of service. Uh, America is deeply appreciative 
Uh, we are providing them with the resources they need to be successful, to continue to engage in the activities in a way that will deliver good outcomes, and to thank them for their willingness to uh, take this ultimate risk that, that every service member faces. Uh, the, the, I remind my diplomats all around the world, they too face threats to them to themselves and to their families. And when I get a chance to talk to uh, those officers at the State Department, those diplomats, I tell them the same thing I'd like to share with the families uh, that are here at CENTCOM and at SOCOM. Uh, thank them uh, for their amazing professionalism work and their willingness uh, to serve America at these challenging times. Mr. Secretary, you've said uh, many times that the U.S. is not seeking war with Iran. Um, but President Trump said this week that he would consider going to war over the Iran obtaining nuclear weapons. Is that something that was discussed here today at CENTCOM? And can you give us any more details as to the different kinds? When we saw you on Sunday, you said military options were, of course, something that was being considered. Can you give us any more details about those discussions today? Look, one of the purposes of my visit today was to make sure that we were coordinated. Uh, the responsibility for diplomacy, achieving the strategic outcomes that President Trump has sent forth, uh, falls on all of us, but the State Department is, has the first oar in the water on that. Uh, but we can't do that without making sure that we have the capability to respond if Iran makes a bad decision if it makes a decision to go after an American or an American interest or to uh, continue to proliferate its nuclear weapons program. And so we talked about a broad range of issues here today across all of that spectrum. Uh, I, I know that the uh, soldier, sailor, and airmen and Marines inside of CENTCOM are ready to respond to any threat that the Islamic of Iran should present to the United States. And we talked about each of those and how to make sure that we were in sync and how we would prepare those options for the President of the United States. Of coming here to Tampa to talk with generals rather than talk with generals at the Pentagon, and should your trip here be a message to Iran? So I talk with generals at the Pentagon all the time too. So these are not mutually exclusive options. Uh, but it was important for me to get here into the into the headquarters where where a lot of this work is doing. It, let, it, it made sure we didn't have to send a whole bunch of folks up to meet me in Washington. I got a chance to meet with not only those two leaders uh, but their teams today, and they got a chance in turn to hear how the State Department is thinking about this problem and how we're delivering uh, deterrence in the region and uh, reinforce with them the strategic objectives of the United States of America. So it was, it was important and valuable to me to get here uh, so that I could talk to a broader range of leaders and hear at a more granular level uh, all of the great work that they've been engaged in. Great. I'll take one more. Anything to say about that? Yeah. Uh, I don't have anything to add to that. We, I, I'll, say, I'll say only this. Um, it, it is the case that in May we had over 140,000 uh, illegal immigrants enter to this nation unlawfully. Uh, it is an important undertaking to ensure that we have sovereignty and security at our southern border. And so uh, every action this administration is taking is designed to do just that. President Trump has been unambiguous, very clear. Uh, we worked, I worked personally on uh, an arrangement with Mexico now uh, a week and a few days ago. Uh, I am confident that we will uh, get that under control, uh, and it is important. It's important for American national security that we do, in fact, achieve that. Thank you all.